for a war cry. I said it's time for a war cry. It's homecoming season, and that means that more than 100 black institutions will be giving the sights and sounds. This time of year, alum return to their alma maters to relive the best days of their lives, and nobody does it quite like a HBCU. But at the Grio, this homecoming season means that we're going to do more than just celebrate black culture. We are calling on black students and educators to come home, to return to the institutions that were created for us, by us. Breaking news from the Supreme Court. The court has just issued a landmark ruling on affirmative action, officially ending the practice in college admissions processes. Affirmative action no longer exists, and we are not about to beg for a spot at the PWI. We want the best and the brightest to keep going to HBCUs just like they always have. And together, by amplifying black institutions, we can start an HBCU homecoming movement. We're excited to bring you special coverage of HBCUs and homecoming season, and nobody does it like the Grio. I'm your host, Mark Lamont Hill. Tonight and every Friday night during this time, we will be amplifying black colleges and universities, and we're excited to feature Tuskegee University tonight. I am so excited about that. That's why I'm rocking this fresh Tuskegee legacy windbreaker. Shout out to the Tones of Melanin for the hookup as part of their new HBCU fall line. To wear your HBCU pride, just head over to tonesofmelanin.com. The company is owned and operated by black women, so be sure to give them your support. Tonight, we're taking you on a trip to Tuskegee, Alabama, just east of Montgomery, to the only HBCU designated a national historic site. Tuskegee University is a private institution founded in 1881 by Booker T. Washington. Some of its historical figures also include George Washington Carver. The university has grown to offer more than 60 degree programs, and the one we want to talk about today is Tuskegee's food and nutrition science major. I feel like food is your medicine. God put food here on earth for us to enjoy, and we should not only just enjoy it, but it should support our normal life. The concept of food as medicine is key. The black community has long been situated in food deserts with no easy access to fresh food. That's just one of many reasons behind food disparities that our community faces. Joining me now is Dr. Olga Bolden-Tiller. She is the Dean of the College of Agriculture, Environment, and Nutrition Sciences. And also joining us is Diallo Patterson. He is a food and nutrition science major, taking up the food science option. I want to welcome you both to the Grill, Doc. I'm going to start with you. Only one in 100 farmers is black, owning less than 5 million acres. That is a stunning number. Why is getting black people back into agriculture so important? Well, Mark, I think you said it already. The reality is food is medicine. And so it makes it so important for us as black people to be a part of that industry. That way we can make certain that the foods that we are choosing to put on the plates of the families in our community are going to be the ones that will result in us being healthy. We talked about um, food deserts and things of that nature. But the reality is, when we have food deserts, we also have an inequity in terms of access to healthy and nutritious food. So not just food, but healthy and nutritious food. And we know that when people eat healthy and nutritious food, that they have less health issues. And so when we look in the black community, particularly, especially in lower socioeconomic areas, we have more people with diabetes, with cancer, high blood pressure, et cetera. And so it's so important that we are part of the food industry so that we can make sure that the food that's being grown and that's being put on the place of our families are items that are gonna let us live long, healthy lives. So we must be present and accounted for. Diallo, uh, explain the food science option of this major. Uh, what is it? And also like, how do you plan on using your degree? Well, thank you. So thank you, Mark, for having us. And my major food science is basically the study of the entire food supply chain from farm to table. And it encompasses various dips, disciplines such as food chemistry, sensory evaluation, and also food packaging. 
So just ensuring that the food supply chain is safe and secure. So what I will be doing with my major upon graduation is of course, going to graduate school and pursuing my PhD, then going to work for the USDA and NIFA, the National Institute of Food and Agriculture. So I'm an 1890, proud 1890 USDA scholar with NIFA. So that scholarship actually provides students with scholarships, internships, and also- now Break down NIFA for me, because I, 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 this is your expertise, not mine. What's NIFA stand for? Or what is it? So the, the National Institute of Food and Agriculture. So it's just an agency oh. under the USDA. Gotcha. Yes, sir. So that gotcha. agency See? is responsible. Well, I was going to say that agency is responsible for allocating grants and funding for research and outreach to various institutions and companies. That seems necessary. Doc, Dr. Bolden Tiller, the USDA says one million more families were added to the food and secure list in 2022. We know that uh, CAEN, C-A-E-N-S, has been part of the effort to stop hunger. Are there any plans, I don't know, to continue that work? Is there anything else we should be doing? Well, you know what? We're committed to making certain that people have access to food. Um, and like you said, so many more families just in this past year have been added to the list of folks who don't have food security. And so it's very important for us to make certain that we are utilizing technologies to make certain that more food is produced, but more importantly, to make certain that folks know where to find the food. Here in our community in Tuskegee, Alabama, our students at our college, as well as throughout our university, are committed to being a part of food bank efforts, getting the word out, working and volunteering as a part of after school programs and things of that nature. It is so important that we not only have food, but that we are a part of that food chain to make certain that nutritious and wholesome food is getting to the people who actually need it. That's so important. And we will I, I just want to bring one thing in real quick, climate change, uh, which is a very real thing. Um, that has to sort of inform how you think about teaching this program as well, um, because the, the realities on the ground are different. Our ecological circumstances have changed. And I know you all are very nimble in how you think about this. Um, anyway, we got to run. But Diallo, before we go real fast, uh, you are in the hot seat. We all heard about ball and parlay. The TU tailgates, they're legendary. What would you say makes Tuskegee special? There are people who are watching that's trying to make that decision. What can you tell them to persuade them that you, your spot is where they need to be? So, of course, Tuskegee, we are the pride of the Swift Grown South. And, of course, the rich history that we possess at this HBCU is unlike any other. And more importantly, the history that we will continue to make with students like me and like future students going forward. I love that. That was actually a great answer. I respect everything about that answer in terms of how concise, how articulate, how smart it is. If you hadn't told me off camera that you liked candy corn, I might be nominating you for some kind of award. But now I got to question your judgment, too, sir. <laughs> but we still love you and respect <laughs> you and want you to be successful. Best of luck, young man. Dr. Olga Bolden Tiller, thank you so much for joining us as well. Everybody, if you want to learn more about Tuskegee University, head over to their website at the address on your screen, tuskegee.edu. And yes, I know I'm dressed like candy corn. My team told me during the break, I think they set me up. Next on The Griot, we're taking you on a tour of the South to some of the best places to eat near HBCUs. If you're in town to enjoy some football, you're going to want to eat, so you don't want to miss this. Welcome back to the Grio. Y'all might have noticed I changed into this Howard 1867 sweatshirt. That's only because we're sharing the HBCU love today. We got to sh spread the love out. Shout out to Black & Scholar. That's an apparel company that is owned and operated by a black woman. You can wear your HBCU pride by visiting blackandscholar.com. They offer more officially licensed Howard apparel. You can also get stuff for other colleges and universities, too, even though Howard people will tell you there is no other college or university other than HU. Howard recently wrapped its homecoming, and from what I heard, it was epic. Here are the HBCU homecomings happening this weekend. We got Allen University, which is hosting Edward Waters. We got Hampton University, Morehouse, Norfolk State, and FAMU, all looking to defend home turf at homecoming. Harris-Stowe State University is also celebrating homecoming, but... 
they will not have a football matchup. Now, if you're pulling up to homecoming or you're headed to your alma mater to enjoy the game, there are a number of amazing ways to eat around HBCUs, just in case tailgating ain't your thing. Our sister network, HBCU Go, takes us on a tour of the best black-owned spots that you can try. We start with the ultimate kitchen in Houston, Texas. People want to work for you. It's a, it's a new environment. It's a new thing that society likes with this brunch environment. For the catfish, shrimp, and grits. And it's a, a favorite at the Ultimate Kitchen, and they love it. I just watched you take your first bite. What was it giving? This oxtail is amazing. I love it. So I'm going to sit right here and eat the rest of my meal. But I hear Ty Carter and Laurentia Moen are in D.C. for a girls' day. Let's see what they've got cooking. Thanks, Courtney. We're here in the nation's capital, just mere steps away from the campus of Howard University. That's right, at one of the most historic restaurants on the East Coast, Ben's Chili Bowl. And right next door is Ben's Next Door. But let's go into Ben's Chili Bowl and check it out first. Let's do it. Oh, it's a pleasure to have you here and to talk with you. HBCU is very important to all of us. Definitely. So now you're less than one mile away from the Howard University, where your husband graduated from, right, which is huge. Did you know it's been there since 1867? Yes, it has. So many amazing individuals have walked through those doors, from Jesse Jackson to Martin Luther King to Steve Harvey to Kevin Hart in most recent years. Talk to me about how you were able to keep this success. What's your secret to success throughout all these years? We made it loud and pretty and just lots of color and all that. And the neighborhood took to it right away. I'm picking up my phone. I got to call Nia right now. Yes. Ty, what's up? No, I am actually headed to my old stomping grounds, Montgomery, Alabama. Here, girl, I'm, no, I'm headed to Bryn's Wings, the best wings in probably the South. All right, guys, so I got my favorite. I got a 10-piece hot with lemon pepper sprinkles, extra wet sauce, okra, and of course, ranch and a water to wash it down. So, let's try out the wings. Mm -hmm. Just how I remember it. Amazing. Mm. Let's try the okra. For all of my southern people, this is a tradition. Amazing. Chef kiss. See now, they done went and made me hungry. Woof. We know food is just as important as the band at a football game. Louisiana is home to some of the best Southern cuisine, so you know the tailgate at the game at Grambling is going to be on point. Grambling State takes on Bethune-Cookman. Kickoff is at 2 p.m. Central. Check your local listings to find complete coverage on HBCU Go. Download the free mobile app or visit hbcugo.tv. There'll also be in Albany, Georgia, where Albany State is looking to hold off Miles College. That's another game I'm looking forward to seeing. HBCU Go play-by-play -play analyst James Hadnot joins us now with a look at the matchup. James? Well, thank you so much, Mark. This week's matchup is very interesting because Albany State is coming off a loss last week to Edward Waters in a game that they felt that they should have won. They had control. They were up 10 points in the fourth quarter, and they end up falling in that matchup. So they're going to be playing with a lot of gusto, a lot of fury going up against a Miles team that has maybe the best story in the SIAC overall. Last season, they had just one win. It's been a complete turnaround for head coach Sam Shade, and this side is ready to take on an Albany State team that was picked to finish second in the league. Miles trying to be the team to play in the SIAC championship game, and they have a couple of great wide receivers, Jordan Pollard and Jay Andrews, both who will be big time targets for Edwin Klein Peter. The series history overall is Albany State has won the last three matchups, so that is something that they can bring in to this matchup. I'm James Hadnock, HBCU Go. You can only watch that game right here on the Grio Cable. Kickoff is at 1 p.m. Eastern. A lot of football to be played this weekend at HBCUs around the country, and meteorologist Paul Goodlow is standing by at the Weather Channel. Paul, you gotta tell us who has the best weather for a tailgate.
Well, Mark, the ideal place to watch a game, have some halftime activities, definitely the southeast, looking at plenty of sunshine, dry weather, the rain back across the Midwest, but it's not only going to be dry, it's going to be warm, feeling like more perhaps like maybe the first week of September than last week of October, last weekend of October, plenty of 80s here. And just a little bit of humidity, but overall very, very comfortable and great weather enjoying here in Albany, Georgia, as the uh, Golden Rams host the Golden Bears and temperatures into the lower 80s for the game. And Grambling also enjoying those low 80s here as Bethune Cookman is coming in town for the game. So great weather for many weekend games here across the southeast. Mark. Thanks, Paul. Homecoming is in full swing at Morehouse College. Next on the Grio. One of my colleagues has a few things to get off his chest about why he thinks that Morehouse is the best HBCU ever. Hold on to your seats. Welcome back to the Grio and our special HBCU series. We love to see alumni wearing their HBCU pride on their sleeves. So. I'm going to pass the mic to my colleague over at the Griot's Black Podcast Network. He is a proud Morehouse man. My name is Panama Jackson. I'm a columnist at the Griot and the host of the Deer Culture Podcast on the Griot Black Podcast Network. And I'm a 2001 graduate of Morehouse College. I love my HBCU because, frankly, it's better than everybody else's. Let's just start there. Number two, our homecoming, our Spellhouse homecoming, which is the combination of Spellman College and Morehouse College. We do our joint homecomings together. It's better than everybody else's. But most importantly, outside of the, the braggadocious stuff that everybody who went to Morehouse is entitled to, uh, I really enjoy being in a space that allowed me to see other people that looked like me who had aspirations like I did who are all working together to get there at the same time and help push us, help push each other to heights that maybe we didn't even realize we were able to achieve, right? So, you know, Morehouse gave me that because it put me in space with black men and professors and an administration that cared about me. They didn't look at me just as another student. They looked at me as a person who has something to offer. And I know other HBCUs had that, but I didn't go to those other HBCUs. I went to Morehouse. So Morehouse gave that to me, and I'm eternally grateful. I am who I am today because of Morehouse College. Uh, I will give Morehouse all the credit for ensuring that I believed I belonged in every single room I walk into. So shouts out to Morehouse College and especially the class of 01. My colleague Jaron Keith Gaynor is also a Morehouse alum, and I'm sure that he co-signs everything that Panama just said. <laughs> Stay with me. Final word after this quick break. All right, family, we have reached the end of the show. But before I let you go, a word about discrimination of black college students. It is still a major problem. 21% of black students face discrimination at their higher education institutions. That is according to a survey that was done by Gallup and the Lumina Foundation. Now, in the study, the less diverse a student body was, the more likely black students were to report feeling disrespected and physically or mentally unsafe. 61% of the students who experienced discrimination said they considered dropping out within the last six months. This is the problem with the slew of bills across the country that are banning teaching about race in schools. People attack what they fear, and many white students attack black students because they only know the negative stereotypes that are perpetrated in mainstream media and dominant narratives. So we need diverse books, we need diverse staff, and we need real history lessons to combat that. This is why the Scholastic Book Fair decision to not separate books based on diversity is so important. Black students need learning environments where they feel welcome. That should include all schools. But for now, HBCUs are filling the gap, allowing students to learn without fear of discrimination or racism because of the color of their skin. You can get nonstop HBCU content by visiting thegrio.com slash HBCU. You can also download the free Grio app to find unlimited content that amplifies black culture. It's available on all mobile devices. I want to thank you for joining me tonight. My name is Mark Lamont Hill. Good night. Now, if you look, you'll see right now the beautiful campus of Spelman College, courtesy of Spelman College. It was founded in 1881 as a school for free black women in Atlanta, Georgia. It was named in honor of Laura Spellman Rockefeller and her parents, who were longtime activists in the anti-slavery movement. To this day, Spellman continues to be a global leader in educating women 
of African descent.